Today I want to share with you a homemade rice-a-roni recipe. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I think many of us as children will remember the popular boxed rice dish called rice a -roni. It was nicknamed the San Francisco treat, and it was something that was considered really delicious. But my mom, and I think a lot of moms, often didn't buy boxed or pre-prepared foods because they were a little more expensive than what they could make homemade. So today what I want to show you is how to make rice a but make it homemade. And the best thing about making this dish homemade is that you control the ingredients that go into it. Like many boxed or pre-prepared foods that are sold at the grocery store today, when you look at the label, there's often a lot of ingredients that we can't pronounce. But the nice thing is when we make it homemade, we control the ingredients and we are rarely putting preservatives or chemicals into our food. Now, if at any time you want to jump ahead, I always put timestamps in the description underneath this video, as well as the pinned comment. So let's get started and go over the ingredients. They're pretty simple and you probably have them in your pantry. The first thing that you're going to want to start with is some type of cooking fat. Now what I've got in my frying pan, and you're going to need a frying pan, what I've got in my frying pan is a tablespoon of ghee. But you could also use a mixture of butter and olive oil, or you could use just olive oil. And I want to mention, if you saw the video where I showed you how to make schmaltz, which is chicken fat, rendered chicken fat, that would be perfect for this recipe. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just put this on medium heat and get that ghee to start melting. Next, you're going to need a half a pound of thin spaghetti. Now you can also use regular spaghetti if that's all you have, but the texture will be more similar to the boxed products sold at the grocery store if you use thin spaghetti. And those of you who are beginners, a half a pound of thin spaghetti is just a half of a box, and a box is usually one pound. And just eyeball what you think is about half a pound or half the box of the thin spaghetti or regular spaghetti, whatever you're using. It's not an exact science, so you don't have to be perfect. Next, you're gonna want one cup of rice. And what works best in this recipe is just your plain white rice, just a plain, generally called a long grain white rice. You can try it with other rices, but if you want it to resemble the boxed product, then you're gonna to wanna to just use a plain white rice. The other things that you're gonna need is an onion, uh, just a small onion, a little bit of garlic. You can certainly leave that out if you don't like garlic, but uh, I've just got one clove there. You're gonna need a little salt. You need some chicken broth or chicken bone broth. You can also use beef broth or beef bone broth. I'm kind of making a chicken broth version today, uh, but, and you could even use a vegetable broth if you wanted, but pretty much any kind of broth will work well in this. So I've just got two cups of chicken bone broth. And I wanna mention that over on my website, I'll have this printable recipe for you. You can download it or print it out, whatever you want to do, read it online. And the link for that will also be in the description underneath this video, as well as in the printed comment. I also like to add some powdered turmeric to mine as well, and it helps giving it that nice yellow color that looks very similar to the store-bought version. And as a matter of fact, they add turmeric into the boxed version. But the nice thing about adding turmeric is that it's an anti-inflammatory spice. So whenever I can get any kind of anti-inflammatory spices into our diet, I like to add them in. And then I'm gonna add some black pepper. Now I don't think this is traditional uh, to the store-bought version, but the reason that I do that is that black pepper helps you absorb the turmeric and make the most out of those anti-inflammatory properties. And it's nice to have a little parsley on hand to add to it. Uh, that I believe is included in the store-bought version and it's kind of what gives it those little green uh, specks that you might see if you see a picture on the front of the box. Uh, you can use the dried, which is what I like to use in this recipe. I think it works really well. But if you have fresh, you can use that too. You just wanna, you'll want to chop it up kind of fine. Now I've already got my onion and my garlic peeled, but I just want to mention if you're in the process of doing that, save your scraps. Put these in your scrap bag 
for when you make bone broth or vegetable broth, whatever way you like to use these scraps. But onion skins and garlic skins contain just as much nutrition as the actual onion and the garlic. Now the first thing that we're going to do is break up our thin spaghetti into half inch to one inch pieces. And again, it's not an exact science. And I'll just take a bunch of spaghetti at one time and start to break it up. I'm, I'm not going to do each one individually. That would take a while. But I also want to mention, if you saw my Aldi video, uh, where I did like best bargains at all these and I'll be sure to link to that. That's a fun video, but they sell pasta and it's made with semolina and it looks like it's a thin spaghetti or a spaghetti and it's already broken up into little pieces and the, the bags, they were seven ounces each, uh, which would be fairly close to what you would need for this recipe. And they were already broken up and sold in bags. And I thought that was so clever because you could use that to make rice aroni. You could use that uh, just to throw it into a soup and you know, it just makes life very easy. And they were like tw 27, 28 cents. I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, so if, if you have an Aldi's near you, you can look for that and then you don't have to do this task. Well, I've got this all broke up into little pieces. And now what we're going to do is just go ahead and put this right into our frying pan. And then along with the pieces of the thin spaghetti, we're going to go ahead and put in our one cup of rice. And as I mentioned earlier, that's just a white rice, just a long grain white rice. And then all we're going to do is mix this up and start sauteing this till everything starts taking on a nice golden color. All you need to do is just move this around a little while the pasta and the rice are becoming a nice golden brown. So after about a minute or so as you're stirring this around and allowing it to become a nice golden brown, you want to go ahead and add in your onion and your garlic. Now you can have chopped your onion up small if you want. I like to just go ahead and grate it on this hand grater. I find that it really blends very well and so nobody's getting kind of big chunks of onion uh, in their rice aroni. Then I just go ahead and mix in that onion just to stir that around, around, around a bit as it continues to brown. And then I'm going to take my little piece of garlic here. When I was peeling it, it broke into multiple pieces, but I'm going to do my best with it. And I've got one of those little microplane graters, and I'm just going to go ahead and grate the garlic right in. And then I'll just go ahead and continue to stir this around to get that garlic nice and mixed in. Now everything smells wonderful and it looks great. The pasta is taken on uh, some nice golden brown color. So next what we want to do is add in some salt. Now I find a half a teaspoon of salt works really well. And that's because I'm using a chicken bone broth that's been homemade. And if you want to learn how to make that, it's very easy to do and you just use the chicken carcass. So you literally make this for pennies. But if you're using a homemade chicken bone broth or a homemade chicken broth, you're probably going to want to add a little salt if you don't add salt to your bone broth or broths, which I don't. But if you're using a store-bought chicken bone broth or a store-bought uh, chicken broth, then you may want to hold off on the salt until you taste it when it's all done. And for the turmeric, I also add just a half a teaspoon and that's going to give it that beautiful yellow color. Now I'll be honest with you, I don't really measure the pepper, but I have the peppercorns in a pepper mill and so I usually just grind, do a, just a few twists on the grinder, so it's not very much. And with the dried parsley, I also do the same, just about a half a teaspoon. You just want those few little bit of green specks. <laughs> you don't want to overload it. And if you're using the fresh, yeah, just chop it up fine and kind of play it by ear. Uh, maybe a little more, you know, since it's fresh, maybe a little more than a half a teaspoon. Now I'm just going to mix all of these seasonings in just to get them distributed throughout. And as you mix it in, you're going to notice it's really starting to look like rice aroni because that turmeric is coloring everything a beautiful yellow. Now all we have to do is add in our chicken broth bring this up to a boil and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Well, this has come up to a boil, so I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on. And I'm just going to turn this down to about a medium, medium low simmer. You know, everybody's cooktop is different. This one runs a little hot, so I'm actually going to have it on a medium low simmer. 
and we're going to let that simmer for 20 minutes and then we'll give it a taste and see how it turned out. Well, this simmered for 20 minutes and I just turned it off. I'm looking at it through my glass lid. It looks perfect. It's just delightful and the aroma is wonderful. It looks just like the store-bought and you can just take a fork and just fluff it up a little bit and you'll see how light and airy it is. It's just wonderful. Well, let's give this a taste and see how it turned out. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Well, this is a wonderful side dish. So easy to make and wholesome ingredients. Now, if you'd like more easy side dishes and some quick and easy main meals, be sure to click on this video where I have a playlist including all of those sorts of things and more. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.